they're looking at you as a cog in the wheel, in the machine. Yeah. You're being trained, not educated. This is shocking, and I've not said this publicly until this minute. This is the Gordowski of WeAreChange.org, and I am here with Charlotte Isby, who's an American whistleblower who worked for the U.S. Department of Education. Now, Charlotte, can you tell us specifically what was your position and what did you uncover in the U.S. Department of Education? Well, my position was uh, very, very important, although I did not have the credentials for it. I just, the hand of God, put me into an, the Office of Educational Research and Improvement. Uh, as senior policy advisor. And what year was this? In 1981. So this was Reagan? Under Reagan. And I just happened to get plopped into that slot that ordinarily in the past would have been held by the former president of Harvard or Stanford or uh, Columbia, whatever. And so I had access to all the old plans and the new, all of which were geared towards limited learning for lifelong labor, basically, mm. which is what we're looking at today through school choice, yeah. tax-funded school choice. That's putting it in a nutshell. It's been the plan ever since the late 1890s. So it's deliberately yes. lowering the educational system yeah. so we would have a dumbed-down public. Why would they do this? Well, What's your rationale for this? Well, because they want workers. They want worker bees. They don't want intelligent people, you know, who can, who will, you know, if you know what's going on, you might want to do something about it. Yeah. They don't want individualists. They want collectivists. They want people that can be uh, dictated to, moved around on the slavery, basically. Yeah. It is definitely the plan, and it will put, put all of us uh, worldwide under the umbrella of the, uh, they'll call it school district, lifelong, uh, with all the services, health services, uh, transportation, take grandma to see the leaves in the autumn, uh, workforce training, leisure, arts and all will be under the umbrella of the school district, the community school they call it. This is not new, it's been planned ever since the beginning of the last century, funded by the Mott Foundation. Wow. Now all the other foundations are into it too. Now this is the long-term plan that very little people know about. Uh, you can see one block of it, parents know, with school-based clinics. That yeah. gives you a good idea. Now if I could ask you, when you were in the Department of Education, what was the biggest piece of evidence you found proving everything that you're talking about now? Well, uh, when Ronald Reagan, uh, he, he, they had this uh, what was it called? Private Sector Initiative. The White House Private Sector Initiative. I went over there and I said, what are you doing? Uh, it looks like you're merging the public and private sector. And, uh, and I said, isn't that corporate fascism? And they said, oh, oh, oh I, I don't think anybody looks at it that way. Well, that was it. Yeah. That was under Reagan, the system broke. Mm. That was Cap Weinberger, Mad Meese. Together, they decided to change America. The same thing Carnegie Corporation called for in 1934. And we can trace it all the way through to right now. Mark Tucker, the, the uh, school, school to work agenda and the school choice agenda. Without it, they cannot put this in. Because they need every single heartbeat on this planet. So you're telling me the Carnegie Foundation and the other elites are involved yes. in influencing our U.S. Um, educational system in order to dumb us down. Now the Carnegie, Carnegie Foundation is known to many people outside who don't know of many right. things as this great organization that helps and does oh, everything yes. else. But what is the true agenda of these elites and, and people like the Carnegie families right and the, the Rockefeller beginning. families? Right from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, they have really, uh, well you can, you can go all the way back to the 1700s you know, with Adam Weishaupt and the Illuminati and, and uh, then Karl Marx in 1848 with a copied Weishaupt's work. And then you go to the Order at Yale, too. I have the document out of Phi Delta Kappa how they would change education to performance-based. Mm. Now, they couldn't get away with that with the, with the white community. The good, you know, the, our, our schools. The whites would have all said, go away. But they knew they could use the minorities, so they did. And they started that with mastery learning in Chicago, 
and half of the inner city kids in the freshman class dropped out. And even Education Week said, uh, which is a, a professional journal, they called it a human tragedy of enormous proportions. Uh. But that didn't stop them from using this non-competitive individual education plan, Skinnerian, dumbed-down curriculum because they had to perfect it over a period of 30 years with the minorities uh, in order to move it to all of us, yeah. which is what they're putting in all the schools now. James Bach, one of the leading honchos in the Mastery Learning Skinner direct instruction movement, he said, I quote, I don't know of a single inner city school that has not experimented with mastery learning. That's the thing that took all the Chicago kids down. They had to have an excuse to break the system down and to change it. And they used, you know, integration first, yeah. and then Bloom's, Bloom's Chicago Mastery Learning. Uh, and if, if it had been a disaster, why did they continue using it in every inner city school? And where they had evaluation of the Skinner method in the inner city, it would say, the kids may not have learned to read better, but we did do a lot of restructuring in the school system, which was what they were looking for. They couldn't have cared less about the minorities going down the tubes. Zero. My last question is, Going through the whole educational system, what's one important thing that was taken away uh, and replaced with that you think is most detrimental uh, to the learning of our youth? Individualism. Uh, the importance of the individual and uh, the thinking, uh, the, and I think that basically was it. Everything, uh, it was more cooperative learning. Uh, the whole plan was uh, a collectivist education system. A friend of mine, brilliant Australian, she was, she was at a conference of community educators in the um, 70s and all these guys and gals and it was on community education. We killed it in Maine in the 70s, which is this lifelong learning stuff under the umbrella school. Day. Lifelong, long, I mean, unbelievable. So one of the educators says to the guy, what is this you're talking about, community ed? And he said, it's the Chinese communist system. No more comment, huh? Charlotte Isby. The links to your website are in the description. It's an honor and pleasure being able to talk to you. Thank, thank you. you so much for all your brave work. Well, Appreciate that you. very much. I wish that I had a different message, but you know, you can't change things. You can't change things unless you know what they are. How do you fight something if you don't know what you're fighting? Everyone tells you what to do and what's good for you. They don't want you to find your own answers. They want you to believe theirs. I want you to stop gathering information from outside yourself. None of it is driven for the benefit of mankind or humanity, the planet, or the animal kingdom. It's all driven by money. To make more money, to have more control, more